Once again, Scape and Run Parasites has been hit with a few updates, and so this video will be covering updates 1.9.2 through 1.9.5. If you haven't already, go check out my previous video over this mod, link in the cards and in the description. Update 1.9.2 is by far the biggest update out of them all. The rest of the updates are mostly quality of life and bug slash crash fixes. 1.9.2 has added a few new mobs and has given some updates to some older ones. The first new mob is a mangled mess of heads and flesh. It's called the Heed, and it has 50 health points and 9 armor points. Along with that, it deals 15 health points. While this monstrosity doesn't have any special abilities as of yet, this thing is as fast as a truck and hits like one too. Now, the SRP wiki states this parasite can jump 3 blocks high, but I haven't seen it do that at all. The Heed doesn't apply any debuffs to the player, and it cannot adapt to damage types. This parasite belongs to the newly implemented crude tier. This tier of parasites is directly below the primitive tier. Lastly, I'm unsure if the heed can spawn naturally in the world. The wiki and changelog doesn't state anything about this. My guess is that if it can spawn, it will spawn naturally at a certain evolution phase. Up next we have the crux, which is a beautiful abomination of a parasite. It has 70 health points, 9 armor points, and deals 22 health points both on its melee and range attack. This parasite's range attack consists of it picking up blocks and throwing it at a target. The blocks will actually replace itself once it makes contact with other blocks, which is pretty neat. These blocks will break leaves and snow as it travels through the air, and it's also important to mention that the crux can rapidly fire these blocks if it wants to. To note one more thing about this ability, it seems that the crux can almost throw any kind of block. This includes bedrock, which is terrifying. Oh, and also snow seems to disrupt this ability, so fight this thing when there's snow on the ground. This parasite always has the rage effect applied, which makes it faster and stronger. The wiki says it can jump 6 blocks high, and again I haven't seen it do that. The crux does not apply debuffs to players, and it cannot adapt to damage. Along with the heed, this parasite belongs in the crude tier. Speaking of the heed, the crux might have the same spawning properties since they are both in the same tier. There is finally an aquatic parasite. It's called the Primitive Devourer. This squid-like beast has 60 health points, 4 armor points, and deals 21 health points. Once the Devourer initiates combat, it will expand its appendages. And as you can imagine, this parasite is fast in water. Due to it being a primitive tier parasite, the Devourer gives you the Fear 2 effect while you're near it. To add on to that, when it hits a player, it will give them Koth for 3 minutes. This parasite can adapt to damage types, so be careful of that. The one weakness of the Devourer is land, or lack of water. It will not attack when out of water, and it will start to suffocate slowly. And when I say slowly, I mean slowly. It has 60 health points, and it takes a heart of damage every second. And it will try to adapt to suffocation damage. But anyhow, this parasite will most likely spawn at a certain evolution phase. My guess would be phase 4, since that's when primitive parasites can spawn naturally. Yep, you're seeing this right, the Ender Dragon has been assimilated. Her parasitic version has 260 health points, 25 armor points, and deals 30 health points on melee attacks, and deals 20 health points on range attacks. The range attack is based on the normal Ender Dragon's fireball ability. These fireballs can be shot in quick succession. Getting hit by them point blank will apply a 10 second stackable viral effect. And the AoE cloud from the fireballs will inflict poison 1 for 15 seconds. Being near the assimilated dragon will apply cost to you for 4 minutes. And due to it being an assimilated parasite, it will apply fear 1 to you as well. This parasite cannot adapt to damage types, and once again, I'm unsure if this thing can spawn naturally. Since it's a boss mob, I'd have to imagine it will spawn at evolution phase 8, since that's when ancient parasites begin to spawn naturally. Like I said before, some of the older mobs have received changes slash tweaks. The Marauder has a new growl, hurt and death sounds,
its jump cooldown has been reduced, and its jump landing AoE has been increased. The Marauder also has a new AoE smash attack. The Parasite will remain stationary and swing its tentacles around quickly. This attack will give the Rage effect to nearby Parasites. Finally, the Marauder will do what seems like an eating animation after killing a certain number of mobs. Some parasites, specifically those with long appendages, can climb walls now. The Marauder, Warden, Grunt, Adapted Long Arms, and both Adapted and Primitive Arachnida have this ability. A couple of parasites have been slapped with some new animations. Adapted Bolster and both Arachnida have new mouth animations. The host has a new melee attack animation. Its tentacles will actually move when it hits you. The lovable assimilated enderman has a better running animation as well. For the sound effects department, there is now a sound effect for cutting off tendrils. And the landing hit for bigger jumping parasites has some custom sounds. Two parasites have had their textures updated. The heavy carrier and flying carrier are looking rather snazzy with their gray and black makeover. As mentioned during the new mob section, there are damage types adaptation. This mechanic has been given a visual update. When attacking a parasite that has the ability to adapt to damage, it will flash three different colors. Red means it's taking some form of damage. Yellow means all damage is being reduced. And purple means that specific damage type has been fully learned and it may be immune to it. For the last part of the mob section, there are miscellaneous things that couldn't quite be categorized. Manjicators will now move slowly while they have invisibility. Warden has increased jump landing AoE. Warden adaptation reduction capped at 95%. Assimilated Enderman will not melt to fuse with other parasites. Reeker's charge attack cooldown has been reduced. Charge attack damage will be the same as the caster's attack damage. Parasites will try to break blocks while doing their charge attack. And parasites will try to break blocks if they're taking block suffocation damage. Jumping parasites will try to break blocks in the air. Beck and grow time will be reduced when spawning biomass regardless of the phase. All parasites spawned from biomass will have a rage effect. Flying melee parasites have a 4 second cooldown on their abilities. Viral duration has been increased for host bombs and carriers. Primitive and adapted will do small leaps in combat. Primitive and higher will now try to get out of lava. Primitive, adapted, pure, ancient, and ruptors have more resistance to fall damage now. And lastly, primitive, adapted, pure, and ancient pure sites will heal over time if not in combat. Alrighty, we're done. That was a ton of info, but I thought you guys would want to know it. Moving on to the item section, there are new weapon components that can be obtained from killing a variety of parasites. Dried tendons, hardened bone handle, infectious blade fragment, living core, vile shell, and strange bone are new. And look at those tooltips! Beautiful! Since there are new weapon components, the old ones have been removed. The scythe and bow components have been trashed. There are four new weapons in the mod, the cleaver and the sword. The living cleaver has 0.8 attack speed and deals 11 attack damage. When hitting a mob, it will apply viral on them. The living sword has the same attack speed and damage as the living cleaver. This sword inflicts bleeding on targets. The sentient great cleaver has 0.8 attack speed and deals 21 attack damage, and it also applies viral when hitting a mob. The sentient great sword has the same stats as the great cleaver, and it also inflicts bleeding. It's important to note the living weapons have crafting recipes, but the sentient weapons do not. The following items have received texture updates. Pause if you want to check them out. Rolling on into the block section, we have something called the canister cyst. Parasites with block griefing task will place these at random. The canister will be active when placed, and it will collect dropped items in a 32 block radius. 
These items can be retrieved by breaking the canister, but be quick. This block will slowly consume items after less than a minute once it picks up an item. Once it starts emitting particle effects, you will know it has begun the process of deleting items. After it has consumed all the items it sucked up, it will become a non-active canister cyst. A handful of blocks have had their textures changed, but there's a bit of a problem. I searched high and low for these blocks, but I can't find them in-game. The changelong mentions them, but I don't know, they seem to be non-existent. Well, besides the calling you all, that is. There are two new status effects, Heightened Senses and Prey. Heightened Senses is an effect applied to the player. It will increase the follow range of mobs. The Prey effect is a heavy work in progress. It currently does nothing, as far as I'm concerned. Lastly, the Rage effect has been changed where it will now reduce a Parasite's ability cooldown. Colonies have seen a few updates. They are off by default, but this can be modified in the configs. The new mechanic of colonies is global adaptation. When a parasite is killed within the range of effect of a colony, it will send out a signal. This signal is the most common damage type it suffered, meaning new parasites that spawn in the world will have already learned that damage type, hence the name global adaptation. However, if the parasite is killed with fire, it will not send out a signal, since parasites cannot adapt to fire. Destroying a colony core will delete the recorded signal damages, which means new parasites will not have damage adaptation. Structurally wise, colonies have received improved building generation and placement, and like a lot of other things in this mod, colonies are still a work in progress. For the last section of the 1.9.2 update, I'd like to mention a new experiment mechanic called Scent Logic. If I'm going to be honest, I have no clue what this mechanic means or what it'll do in the future. Though after reading through it, the Scent Logic seems like a cause and effect kind of thing. A certain event will happen, which will then make this thing check that, if it reaches a certain threshold, this will happen. Yeah, like I said, I don't really know what's going on here. It seems interesting though, can't wait to see what the devs do with it. The next few updates are rather small compared to the 1.9.2 update, so I'll quickly go over them. Update 1.9.3 fixed a few crashing issues, and also made a few small changes to mobs and weapons. For the mob changes, parasites with charge attacks have been tweaked. They will wait a small duration and their body will shake before going through with their charge. The AoE damage of the charge will not begin until the charge attack has been initiated. Adapted Reeker and Warden charge speeds have been tweaked. Ancient Parasite's regeneration has been reduced by half. And to conclude the mob changes, the Adapted Reeker's damage aura has been removed. The weapons in Update 1.9.3 have seen an optional cosmetic change. You can go into the config and change the textures for the Sentient Sword, Sentient Cleaver, and Living Cleaver. Update 1.9.4 introduces more crash fixes and a few changes to already existing content. One mob has been changed and that would be the Crux. The Crux will now try to kill everything except creepers and water mobs. He is a very angry boy. The Parasite now also has AoE melee attacks. Lastly, the status effect Viral has been fixed. In 1.9.2, the Viral effect would leave you with zero hearts if it got to a certain level, but now it will always leave you with one heart no matter the potency. Update 1.9.5, which is the newest update as of now, adds more fixes, mob changes, and it changed the canister cyst. Here are the following mob changes. Manjucators can be seen while it has the invisibility effect. A simulated cow charge attack now respects frames. The Crux has a sack animation now. The simulated Big Spider will no longer drop lure components. The simulated Ender Dragon received a small texture tweak. And a few parasites have been given reduced cooldown for the melee attack from 20 ticks to 10. The Ruptor, Manjucator, a simulated Wolf, and Heed were given this buff. The Canister Cyst is now called the Parasitic Cyst. In the previous updates, the Cyst would consume items with durability instantly, but now it will consume 5 durability from it. That way you won't lose your tools immediately. The cyst consume time has been nerfed from 2 seconds to 5 seconds, and its range has been nerfed from 32 blocks to 16 blocks. To balance these nerfs, parasites with mob griefing will place them more frequently. 
that has been updates 1.9.2 through 1.9.5. Like my previous video over this mod, I didn't cover any of the config changes. Go check out the mods page or wiki to go look at them. My favorite parasite from these updates is the Crux. Which one is yours? Tell me in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, drop a like on the video, and make sure to subscribe for more mod-related content like this in the future. And as always, Kermblitz, stay snazzy.